Hi, welcome back to the Custom Saber Shop on YouTube. My name is Rob, and you may have just discovered that there's a new Nano Biscotti version 3 from Plector Labs that has an onboard power extender. What does that mean? Well, you've come to the right place. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the onboard power extender on the Nano Biscotti version 3 to wire up your Saber with flash on clash. All of the things you'll need for the operation today will be listed in the description of this video. As well today you're going to need a soldering iron. I recommend something that's ESD safe or electrostatic safe so you don't damage any of your electronics. You're going to need solder. Uh, you're going to need, uh, you could use some helping hands. They're a little tool that I find useful. You'll also be able to get by with a, with a, a clamp of some kind to hold your, uh, your soundboard while you're working on it. You're going to need a pair of wire snips, something that you can also strip the wire with. I'll be working with 28 gauge wire, so you need something that's very delicate and can strip the wire delicately. But I think that's all we need, so let's get started. Okay, here's all the elements that we're going to be using today. Now you'll notice I've got my LED already mounted on a heatsink. I've got the Nano Biscotti 3. Um, I've got a, a battery here already attached to a recharge port. I'm not going to cover that in uh, in this video, but if you'd like to see a, a video showing how to properly connect a recharge port, just click here and I'll link to a, a video that I did showing, uh, showing how to do that. I've already got my switch wired up as you can see and my speaker is wired up and installed in a speaker holder. Uh, now these are the resistors that came uh, when I ordered them. These are the 2.5 ohm resistor and I've also got a 1.2 ohm resistor, 3 watt. Uh, now, if you order resistors, maybe one of each, and they arrive and you don't know which is which, it's pretty easy. Uh, all you need to do is, is see these colored bands on the resistor. All you need to do is go online, Google uh, resistor color bands, and uh, there's lots of different uh, sites where you can just punch in the different colored bands in order, and it will give you the, uh, the value of the resistor, just if you want to double check and confirm that you are right and then you can write it down like I've done here so you know which is which. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to wire up uh, wires to the LED. Um, but before we get to that I want to point out that uh, this Nano Biscotti that we're going to be using today is a really um, really excellent piece of technology and what you need to do before handling this is you need to download the manual that's available at the Custom Saber Shop. There's a link where you bought the Nano Biscotti, and you can print off a number of pages like this. I'm going to be using, uh, uh, you can see I've already started to take some notes of the parts that I'm using. This is page 6. Um, I'm also going to be using particularly page 9 where it describes the wiring. This is the exact wiring I'm going to be walking you through today. Particularly page 14 if you want to follow along. Um, this is the wiring for the flash on clash. So we're going to be using the onboard power extender that's on the new Nano Biscotti 3. Um, and I'm even going to be using the same colors of wires uh, with the demonstration today so that you can follow along easily. So it's very important that you read the manual. Okay, first up is wiring up the LED. Uh, I would recommend a Tri-Cree LED from the Custom Saber Shop. This is an old Tri-Rebel that we're going to be using today just for, for example. They wire up the same way, use the same lens, um, so it's going to be really simple. So I've gone and, and cut a, a number of little different uh, two-inch wires. So these, I've got two. 2 inch yellow wires, 2 inch red wire, and 2 2 inch blue wires just so that we can uh, so recreate this example. I've also got a longer green wire and a longer blue wire. So we're going to solder these to uh, the LED in the right pattern and then I'll show you um, what we're going to do from there. Okay, I'm ready to solder my wires and as those of you that have followed my videos before know that I like to use these helping hands to, uh, to hold the wires in place. I'm going to show you how to do it without those if you don't have them. Um, now my LED is already mounted onto my copper backing with uh, the, uh, the hex tape so it's, uh, it's nice and stuck on there. I've already used this LED so you can see it's kind of twisted out of, out of alignment a little bit um, but for today this is going to work fine as long as your wires can fit through there and everything fits okay. And I've taken my wires and I've stripped off about an eighth of an inch off the end of each wire and uh, I'm going to twist, twist them like this so that they're nice and neat. We're going to pre-tin those. Uh, so the first thing is I'm going to show you how to uh, use the helping hands. You know, some of you may have already seen this if you've watched my videos. And this is called pre-tinning. It's really important. There. Now that wire is ready to go. You can see there's already solder on my, 
my pads. Now with this LED, I happen to know that these two are my blue LEDs and this one's my white. So if you order a blue, blue, white, or a green, green, white, or a red, red, white, um, you'll be able to see which, which two are the color and which two is the white um, very easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this blue wire to the negative pad on my blue LED. The helping hands are excellent for that because they hold it in perfect position. I get my solder. Done. That's a really good joint. Now if you don't have helping hands, it is still possible to do this. You hold it across, touch it, and because both pad and wire are pre-tinned, you can do it without the use of helping hands. Okay, as you can see, I'm uh, done soldering my uh, my wires, and just like the example in the manual, I've got uh, the yellow lines going to the positive of both of my blue LEDs. I've got the blue lines going to the negatives of both my blue LEDs. I've got the red line going to the positive of my flash on clash, my white, and I've got the green line going to the negative of my flash on clash. So I'm just going to take a quick look and inspect that I haven't bridged any solder. If I've used too much solder and bridged a joint, like that one's pretty close, um, then I would need to uh, clean that up, some wire braid or something to sop off that solder and, and do it over again. But I can tell that these are all nice and separate and we're ready to move on. I'm going to run each of these wires through the corresponding little hole like this and then we're ready to proceed with our uh, demonstration. Okay, I've attached my, uh, my lens module to this. It's just safer to work with it once you've got that wired up. So now what I'm going to do is I've stripped the ends of these wires as you can tell. Um, the red one's stripped about, you know, an eighth of an inch, but these ones that I'm going to join, the two blue and the two yellow, I've stripped off about a quarter of an inch. And the reason is, so I can match them up like this, and then twist them together. And just because it's a, a good practice, once I'm done twisting them together like this, before they have a chance to separate again, I'm going to take my soldering iron and some solder, and I'm just going to tin that wire so it will be ready to go to attach to its corresponding resistor. Now while the wire is warm like this, because I just soldered it, you can twist it together and hold it for a second and it'll hold twisted together just for a cleaner wiring. Alright, as you can see I've got my resistor ready to go. I'm going to attach it to the two yellow wires, which of course are the positives to my, uh, my blue die. Before I do, I'm going to put on this heat shrink though. Uh, I recommend 1 16th heat shrink. You can also use 1 8th, I think. This is a size in between. It might be 1 8th. It's my own stuff. I'm also going to snip just a little bit off of that so it lines up cleaner. I'm going to use my helping hands because I get a better result when I use steady helping hands like this than trying to, to do this without them. And I'm going to attach them with a little bit of solder there. Make sure that's a nice joint. I'm going to inspect it. Make sure that I can twist a little bit. Yeah, it's a nice joint. I'm going to slide my shrink up. Of course I can hit that with a, with a blow, uh, blow dryer or some other tool to heat it up. I can also rub my soldering iron on it if it's clean and it starts to shrink up just to kind of hold it in place until I can get it with the blow dryer or the heat gun later. And now I have a 0.5 ohm resistor on both my, uh, my positive lines to my blue LEDs. Now at this point I want to mention there is some discussion on whether you should use the resistor on both of these lines before joining them. Whether each LED in here should have its own separate 0.5 ohm resistor. And I want to explain something that will helpfully, hopefully help simplify it for everyone. Uh, you often use a resistor to protect the LED from blowing uh, if the voltage is too high. This is not why we're really using the resistor in this application. We're only using a 3.7 volt battery and if you're using the Tri-Cree, uh, the blues, the greens, uh, the whites, their forward voltage, their maximum voltage is, uh, is pretty close to the 3.7 you're going to be getting. Even the 4.1 from a fully charged 3.7 volt battery is going to be within the safety parameters of driving these LEDs and overdriving them a little bit. So the resistor's not in place to protect them. If it was, you might need to do your calculation so that each LED had its own resistor. The reason we're using one resistor is because we don't want the LED to consume so much of the power that the, the, the Nano Biscotti soundboard uh, has complications. So the LED in this application on both of these parallel joined 
blue dice uh, is just to keep the, the soundboard in its parameters for operating, operating nicely. So it is perfectly fine to use 1.5 ohm LED for both of these. Now this is a, I believe this is a 5 watt LED, but even if it's a 3 watt, it's not going to heat up too much um, because it's only 0.5 ohms that it's taking off. So there is some discussion whether you should use two LED or two resistors in this application or one. You can use two if you prefer. I'm just saying you really do not need to. In fact, the, uh, the flash on clash, which is the one we're going to do next, you could run that straight because it's only a periodic flash, a pulse. Um, it may not need a resistor if it's a white flash on clash die. We're going to use the other 0.5 ohm. We're going to attach that anyways. That's just a good practice. I want to point out too that uh, the reason I got the 1.2 ohm 3 watt resistor is uh, if this was a red red white LED, the red have a different voltage than the, the blues and the greens and the whites. Um, so you would need a beefier resistor um, in this place instead of a 0.5 ohm for these two. You could still do them in parallel with one resistor like this. 1.2 ohm would be a better choice because you need to resistor the reds a little bit differently. Um, if you haven't already learned Ohm's Law, learned how to calculate your own resistors, it's the most commonly asked question on the forums in regards to lightsabers. What resistor should I use for this LED? It really is so simple uh, to figure it out yourself that sometimes it gets frustrating for the, the admins and the mods on the saber forums to answer the same question over and over again. So do yourself a favor, go look up Ohm's Law, go look up an online resistor calculator, learn what your LED's maximum voltage and amps are, and then learn how to calculate an LED it really, or a resistor. It really is simple. All right, you'll notice that there's no resistor on the blue wires. They're just joined together so that I have one blue wire going to the board instead of two. Simplify things. I also uh, got ahead of myself and I cut the legs off the two, uh, the two resistors. So I've gone ahead and soldered them back on so I can show you this. The positive to my parallel blue and the positive to my white are going to the same place. So at this point, I can actually twist these now together. do a great job of twisting them together. Then what I want to do is solder those nice and tight. I want to, I want to be careful I don't unsolder my, my joint that I've already done there. So I'm going to solder them a little further down here so they don't heat up too much. Somewhere around there. A little bit more solder because these are heavier gauge wires. And I can snip them off. And now I'm going to attach that to my main red line, which goes back to my soundboard. did want to point out too that uh, you really do need an eighth inch or larger heat shrink here because you want to make sure that you cover both of the legs. You can see a tiny little bit of metal showing there. The idea with heat shrink is to cover the metal so it doesn't short circuit against anything, but also to act as a stress relief so your wire isn't bending where the solder joint is. Your wire is bending uh, during the braided part, so that uh, keeps it uh, keeps it from breaking, keeps your solder joints from breaking. So now I've, uh, I've measured these lines, I've cut them all about the same length, and I'm going to start soldering them to the correct spots on the board, um, according to, of course, my diagram from the manual. I'm also going to attach my switch wires and attach my speaker wires. Now with the, uh, the one switch wire um, and with, the, uh, with a couple of these, the positive wire, I'm actually going to twist them together with the positive wire from the battery so that they share the same leg. So rather than try to solder one onto uh, one of these holes first and then try to solder, an, solder another wire onto the same hole, I'm actually going to twist them together first and then solder the pair onto that hole. And as always, I'm not going to go through the hole. I'm going to lay it across the hole. Uh, but I'm going to get those soldered up just as they are in the manual and then we can move on to some testing. I wanted to point out too that uh, if you don't have a clamp, something like this, to hold your, uh, your soundboard in while you're working on it, uh, a little uh, woodworking clamp with rubber feet that's got a locking mechanism is a great way to hold this pretty solidly so that you can, uh, you can attach your wires more easily. Okay, as you can see, I've got all my wires attached, uh, just like it is in the manual. I've got my two, two speaker wires there. I've got my one brown switch leg here. I've got my green negative wire going to my white LED. I've got my blue negative wire going to my two blue LEDs. I've got my negative from my battery from the recharge port uh, and I've got that together twisted with the other leg from my switch, the other brown leg. 
And then of course I've got the red wire going to my both my all my LEDs and the red wire coming from my recharge port twisted together on that pair. And I've inspected them to make sure that the solders are all good and there's no bridging there. Of course, if there was some bridging, I would need to get something like this, which is a, a wire braid, and I need to lay it across with my soldering iron, soak up that solder, heat it up really good, and then take the wires off and then do it again carefully. Um, this can be delicate and precision soldering, but if you practice a little bit, you should be able to get it. I also want to point out that these are 28 gauge wires which are available for sale in the Custom Saver shop. I'll provide a link with the parts. Um, with small, so, small wiring like this and twisting together, a 28 gauge really is an excellent choice for this type of wiring. Okay, it's time for a test. Uh, now, of course, we've assembled everything outside of the Saber. I haven't put anything in the Saber parts. Uh, if you're going to do this to test first, uh, that's the way you do it. And then you might need to unsolder some things in order to fit them into chassis parts or inside the Sabre body and mount the switch properly because obviously we haven't run it through a, a hole in a Sabre hilt yet. Um, so if you're following along, uh, you may want to assemble it like this first or you may want to assemble the parts into your Sabre body and then do a final assembly so that you can actually uh, put the Sabre together. Uh, but this is just to show you the wiring. So at this point now we'll take our SD card that came with the Nano Biscotti version 3. And I want to carefully insert that. And the, of course the kill key has always been in while we've been wiring the battery just to make sure that the, uh, the power doesn't go to these things before we're ready for our test. And of course while we're soldering the, the SD card has been out the whole time while we're soldering all these things together. So everything's together. I've uh, double checked and inspected all my wiring to make sure that everything is correct as it is in the diagrams and we're ready to pull the kill key. And that's what you want. You pull your kill key and you hear the boot up sound. So I'm going to tap my switch and my saber, saber illumination comes on. You can see it's blue. When I tap the board, I get my bright white flash on clock. And of course, that is customizable and programmable. You can do a quick flash or a long flash like this one. Hold the button down and it turns off. So we have success. That's how to use the onboard power extender in order to wire the main and the flash on clash LED and it comes ready to go right out of the box. Of course I'm using uh, just a simple momentary switch with this. A momentary switch is what's needed with the Nano Biscotti board. If you'd like to see how to use the anti-vandal switches that have an illumination in them, a little light inside of them, a little LED, uh, then just click here and I'll provide a link to uh, a demonstration of how to wire up an anti-vandal switch uh, in a, in a uh, situation like this so that you could use that with your Sabre. Also, if you'd like to see a full build uh, using uh, the Custom Sabre Shop parts and the chassis parts uh, for a Sabre that would work very much like this, with this new knowledge you could apply it, uh, just click over here and I'll provide a link to uh, a video I did of a, of a whole chassis build that would be really suitable for, for these kinds of parts. So that is how you can build flash on clash into your lightsaber using the Nano Biscotti version 3 from Plector Labs, which is available right now at thecustomsabershop.com. Thanks again for watching.